So, as I started to define in the last video, it is the position itself, vis-a-vis -vis the, the world, vis-a-vis -vis the big questions of life, the big philosophical questions. It is the position of atheism that is arrogant. Position vis-a-vis -vis these questions. And you can keep your slippery definition of atheism if you want. If you remember in the past video, I said atheism, atheists have taken upon themselves of late to define atheism in as loose and vague a way as possible for the sole purpose and the sole purpose only of making it easier to defend in a debate. All atheism means is that I lack a belief in God. Well, no, that's about as vague and loose a definition for the sole purpose of making it easier to defend. That's obvious. Somewhat obnoxious, somewhat annoying. But fine, keep it. Keep your vague, loose definition of atheism because the positional arrogance spills out all the time into almost all of the questions. Let's take, for example, the, the, the argument from evil. Again, this isn't personal. Most of you are even Matt Dillahunty. I don't find him personally arrogant at all. He strikes me. I mean, I haven't watched that many of his videos, but he strikes me as kind of, you know, humble and relatively honest. Uh, a humble servant of his falsehoods, if you will. <laughs> but, so, the position vis-a-vis -vis the cosmos. Let's take, for example, the argument of evil. Atheists have defined God as the being who gives cancer to kids. Seems to be all he does. <laughs> he gives cancer to children and then cackles about it. But, I, the theist, when we talk about the argument from evil, I have taken upon myself... To recognize that there are there is things in this world that are recognizably bad or recognizably negatives, suffering and evil. But I start from the presupposition, buried deep within my heart, that God is ultimately good, totally benevolent, and any evidence to the contrary can either be explained or understood in light of the whole. Now that's a humble way of looking at life. And it's based on a precept, sure, but it's based on a precept that appears to me daily. I experience, and so do you usually, the atheists. This is where the arrogance comes in. This is where the falsehoods come in. Because both of us usually experience our life as net good. You experience the goodness of life just as I do. Just as I do. I ex my experience of life is almost always net good with its struggles, with its bad, with its negatives. I find life overall, you know, profoundly good, beautiful and, you know, overwhelmingly good in some ways. So I have come to a deep presupposition buried deep in my heart that I cannot be dissuaded from, that God is ultimately truly good as the author of that life must be good beyond any possible understanding I have of what defines good. Therein lies the humility. And you don't recognize this humility because most Christians are arrogant, I give you that. But that is a humble position. If I don't understand what about this could be good, it still is good because there are things about the nature of goodness itself. Talk about justice. There must be things about the nature of justice itself. The nature of goodness itself that I myself can, do not understand and probably cannot understand. This is the thing that you never he see. This is the thing that you never get to as an atheist. Because you answer all these questions as glibly and vaguely as possible, or rather as glibly as possible, quickly, and your answers are fake. For example, the problem of evil never occurs to you that the mystery is beyond your understanding. You just answered in the negative. Well, God must be bad. And yet you experience his goodness on a daily basis. Constantly. Everybody does. That's why we came to the conclusion that he's good. Because we experience his goodness in our life constantly. And it would be a violation of, of everything within me if I were to pretend for a minute I don't. That's why I say you pretend that you don't. Because you only think of it theoretically. These kids over here who God's giving cancer to all the time. You don't think of it experientially. Like this is a real being. And you owe him a debt of gratitude. Or this is a real being. And his mysteries are far, far, far beyond human understanding. 
Just the idea that you can box him in to human understandings of good and evil. Right there. You're dealing with the precept. You're dealing with your own precept. And it's profoundly arrogant on its face. And this is a common one with atheists. Just take one example. Me, a popular meme floats around the internet. Uh, floats around Twitter. Tracy Harris. If I were God, I would never give... I would stop kids from being raped. That's how good I am. That's the difference between your, you, me, and your God. Never recognizing the profound arrogance of the statement. And atheists applaud that silly statement all the time. They go, yeah, yeah, we're behind that. If we were God, we'd be good gods. <laughs> the God we have right now is lousy. Again, never even hinting. First of all, never seeing the profound moral arrogance of the position right there. I mean, to, to call it moral arrogance is almost a joke. It's almost like a three-year-old version of, of, of morality. I'm so super good that all the things I would do would be right. Whereas God's are all wrong because he does things that I don't understand. Or allows things that I don't understand. Now, I'll give you, no Christians have answered these questions well over the centuries. But that doesn't mean that the answer isn't buried deep in your heart and kind of obvious. If you recognize in any way, shape, or form, and all of you do, because every time I ask you to defend life, you come up with the same, thi the same things that I say. The beauty of your children, the beauty of your family, the beauty of sunsets, etc., etc., etc. It's really easy to defend life as, in general. Then it's really easy to defend the character of God. Think about that. Really think about that. If you were defending the goodness of life, if you were put on a stand and had to defend how good life actually is, it'd be simple to do. You go, well, the, the, my little pet here, my beautiful family, the, the beauty of sunsets, art, culture, blah, blah, blah. It's simple. Then it's really easy to defend the character of God because those things only are birthed from the heart of God. And if you don't recognize that, therein lies the arrogance.